Hello, I'm today going to review what Ackman says about um, the client of Blizzard. And I will just speak about and give an opinion about everything that he says in this video. I've been playing StarCraft, StarCraft 1, StarCraft 2. I've been playing a Warcraft 1, 2, 3 from its inception. I have played World of Warcraft throughout the expansions. I've played across all of the gaming genres and I just going to make a commentary. I've already watched this video, but I'm going to make a commentary on everything that he says when it is the appropriate time. That is why Warcraft 3 Reforged is so terrible. I wish I never played a Blizzard game ever. It too pains me to hear what Blizzard has become. And you shall... That is me after all the years of waiting for something to improve for Blizzard. Have your wish granted. Wait. If only. No! Ah. Funny. My mind is completely blank now. I could have sworn I was just upset about something, but strange. I don't Come. really sit with me. I have a tale for you. Oh boy. Is it about video games? The fuck you think it is? Of course we're What do you wish to tell me, old man? Well, long ago... I always admire your source of um, direction, Ackman. Ackman, you're the best out there when it comes to direction, when it comes to directing your videos. Video games were much simpler. There existed a company called Blizzard. Over time, Blizzard released several outstanding games that won not only awards, but the hearts of millions. With every new title, Blizzard managed to outdo themselves. They were like Tom Brady, and for many years, Blizzard commanded great respect from gamers everywhere. So, so what happened? The games were great, right? And, and they- Special shout out to Blizzard. Okay, let's go. Kept making them? I don't believe you can target a single mistake and say this is where it all went wrong. Although Blizzard was well loved by many gamers, at some point something in them began to twist and contort until they were no longer the godlike beings we saw them as. There's got to be more to it than that. Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I would just laugh at that line. I wouldn't go that far that I consider them godlike beings. But then again, I'm one of those, you could say, casual gamers. But I totally understand it. And in the sense of great admiration, um, great lore, uh, great world building, great direction. Yeah, Blizzard was on the top fucking ladder at one point. Tell me everything. If you insist. The decline of Blizzard is not a story. <coughs> Funny that the Wrath of the Lich King appears the first thing that appears. It makes me happy that the Wrath of the Lich King imagery appears first because that's when I believe that WoW truly started to decline. But I'll get to that later. That was weird. The decline of Blizzard is not a story about a successful business that is now failing, but rather a business that continuously fails its fans. Blizzard was one of my. Mike Morhaime left the company. I didn't like the direction he took Blizzard, but I don't like the direction J. Allen Brack is leading Blizzard today favorite game developers of all time. My love for this company started when I was like five years old, and I've given them more than a decade's worth of support. Blizzard, yes, me lord. Nintendo, so Bungie, so <laughs> these were the company. Super Mario 64, Donkey Kong 64, I remember the story of Super Mario 64 today, how it ended in the final ba uh, battle against Bowser. Donkey Kong 64, I remember when I defeated that fucking crocodile guy whose name I said, oh, King Crow, King Crow, King, ah, oh, fuck. Now I can't remember his name for shit in my head, but I defeated him in his little fortress that resembled him and I was floating on the fucking sea, on the ocean. I 
battle him when he was in the arena when we had to kick his ass with every single Kong. Uh, the only game I did not play was the third one right there, Bungie. I have no idea about Bungie, uh, but I know about Warcraft 3. I know about Nintendo. Uh, I played everything with Nintendo. The Legend of Zelda series was my favorite. But Super Mario 64, Donkey Kong 64, I grew up on those games. I even grew up on Diddy Kong Racing. Oh, fuck Diddy Kong Racing, Super Mario 64. I hate the Super Super Mario 64 remake they made, but I understand that people like it. But I, I, I the old era of games are my favorite. J they just are. Companies I knew of growing up as a kid, all of them were gods in my eyes. Nothing makes me feel old quite like reminiscing on the first time I ever played a real computer game. You know, sitting there with Pajama Sam, Freddy Fish, Math Blaster. And my brother always played the Pokemon games that he has holding there, and I could totally relate to Ackman. But the thing is, and back in those times, we couldn't really afford a visual Game Boy Advance. We lived kind of in a, back, a, con a country back in time where they didn't really sell material like that for a cheap price uh, we have to always get it overseas which is really fucking shitty and so my brother always got a rom hack and i played it over a rom hack you can play it on your pc if you have a rom hack and in my opinion it's better because it also speeds up the game and and, and some sense you can uh, if you ever if you ever played a rom hacked uh visual game boy advanced on your pc and if you, um i recommend that you try it it's it's really fun uh i did I, you could have used cheats and when i was young i gotta admit i began to use cheats but i wanted to also beat it without using cheats and, and i beat, defeated pokemon ruby emerald gold everything everything without cheats dad bursts into the room sits me down and says son you're almost five years old but you've got a lot of manning up to do. It's time for a real game. Hands me StarCraft and it was like, I'm Harry Potter grabbing the wand that was destined for me. I have so many vivid memories of playing the single player campaign. I felt the same way when I was playing The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask in Ocarina of Time. Custom games, loving the story, voice acting. You called down the thunder, now reap the whirlwind. I could go on and on and on about how awesome these games are, and hopefully I get to make a video about them someday. The storytelling was out of this world, but what really blew yeah. me away were the cinematics. That intro to Brood War? Uh. I love that intro so much, I- It's a really damn shame they canceled starcraft with um nova inside of it if if you didn't know that they capture they actually canceled a game with nova as the main character in starcraft uh it was a first person no it wasn't a first person shooter but it was it was just you control it it kind of resembled a first person shooter but it wasn't really technically a first person shooter but it, but uh, i wish they released that before they went to shit nowadays but parodied it in a horribly irrelevant video StarCraft was so awesome beyond what Blizzard created themselves, and the map editor allowed for unique custom games that anyone could play. Around this time, my brother and I somehow got our hands on a copy of Diablo. And holy hell, scares me shitless. So bloody and graphic. Later I realized in therapy just how traumatized I was by the butcher. I can still hear his voice now. <laughs> Fresh meat. Addicting, satisfying, Diablo was a terrifying introduction to RPGs. Years later, Shapow, Reign of Chaos, showed off the power of Blizzard's battle drums. Frozen Throne comes out and it's like, okay, what have I done to deserve this blessing? An RTS with heroes that level up in combat would set the foundation for what World of Warcraft would become. And you know this part of the story. I'm Mr. T and I'm a Night Elf Mohawk. What's your game? World of Warcraft took the world by storm. Earth and fire. Heed my call. Much like RuneScape, WoW became a pop culture phenomenon. I'll never forget the South Park episode where Blizzard and Comedy Central collaborated to make fun of the game. 
There was so much to love about Blizzard and, and their community, their identity. You know, just the fun-loving spirit behind everything. Oh, man. Poor Johnny. Now, even though this video is going to be more on the negative uh, side, what? I have a special place in my heart and memory for Blizzard as they were. The great people who were a part of it and the incredible experiences they gave me that I, that I bought. And that's not to say they haven't done any good over the last decade. Overwatch was awesome. Wow, classic, an incredible trip down memory lane. Look, I'm not saying bl- I'm not a fan of Overwatch. I, I really, I'm not a fucking fan of Overwatch. I played it, but I'm not a fucking fan of Overwatch. And every time something new releases, I'm still not a fucking fan of Overwatch. My best game ever that I love playing is Team Fortress 2. And once you play Team Fortress 2, you don't want to play Overwatch. That's at least my opinion. But I know there's people who play Team Fortress 2 and Overwatch. But the most people I hang out with, we, we only stick with one game, and it's Team Fortress 2 when it comes to shooters. Because it's very, very balanced. Very balanced. Blizzard as a whole is a reprehensible anti-gamer movement led by Anita Sarkeesian whose sole purpose is to destroy all your favorite franchises and usher in the age of the Burning Legion. It's not that extreme, all right? Truth be told, I don't have much good to say about current Blizzard. And that's where I want to focus, on where they went wrong, how they destroyed their own reputation and image in my eyes, in the eyes of an old-time fan. Any Warcraft player will immediately recognize that music. It's the blood of Manoroth when he drinks the bucket from the pools of blood. Grom is on the screen here, so it kind of shows him. But the point, point being is when the orcs went down to the path of corruption, I, I know the whole entire lore about Manoroth back and um, how he affected the orcs back in, during the blood curse with Gul'dan, everything. I, I'm a big fan, big fan. And, every t and this music that played, I used it in every fucking map. I edited it in Warcraft 3. I'll get to that later. Just so you know, I was a big Warcraft 3 fan. Very big fan. To the point I was still working on projects related to it. And when Reforge hit, I got hit the most. When Blizzard tasted the cursed waters of Activision and merged with them in 2008, it wasn't a highly controversial move at the time. COD 4 had just released 8 months earlier, Guitar Hero was the hottest fad since the Wii, and they hadn't milked any of those franchises to death. Back then, Activision wasn't the same money-grubbing company we know today. Or maybe they were and they were just really good at hiding it. But none of us had the foresight to predict just how much this would affect Blizzard's identity, their culture, and their games. You did this to our people knowingly? No! By Demons Be Driven, Chapter 8, when Thrall addresses Grom. Fuck, I'm such a nerd. Our journey starts in July of 2010. Blizzard had a serious problem. StarCraft 2 absolutely killed it with its reveal, generating massive hype and sending shockwaves across all of Korea. It had been 12 years since Brood War. Fans could not wait. StarCraft II was coming out in three weeks, baby! However, Blizzard's official forums had become filled with vitriol and flame wars. Trolling and community toxicity was spot- I never used the forums, I avoided them like the plague. But I remember the community forums before were actually... full of nice people. Later on, it went like shit when I started to look at them here and there. I, I looked at the forums. You, you look for changes, you look for patches, updates, uh, commentary about the uh, people who develop, the developers. So I, I, I remember when things started to go to shit. Spiraling out, I would not have this continue with the control, which diluted the discussions about the games themselves. 
Blizzard could not have this continue with the launch of StarCraft II. How do we change this toxic part of our community? One executive asked. Weight loss programs and general hygiene classes, another blurted out. I've got it! Brainwashed! People won't talk as much shit on the internet when they can be held accountable for it. So let's force everyone who uses our forums to display their real name. Take that, trolls! Take that! Oh yes, that's a fantastic brilliant. idea. Sheer brilliant. You like a raise. Why are you so Can smart? I suck your dick? Okay, but how do we change this toxic part of our community without spitting in their face? This decision, of course, had the exact reaction you'd expect. The forums were flooded with complaints, and one thread reached over 11,000 replies. Look, I'm not saying let the trolls roam free in the forests of Buckland. But why wouldn't you just get moderators and or create stricter guidelines for using the forums? Forcing everyone to reveal personal information would not only discourage people from posting, but also punish people who did nothing wrong. Ultimately, this new change would have created more problems than it would solve people who did nothing wrong. Like OJ Simpson. I didn't see that, and I really didn't even pay attention to the video, because when this video first played, I listened to it on my headphones. And I was listening to it when I was doing something, working on something. And so I never watched <laughs> what he he was uh, talking about or any text. I didn't see that. And now I'm like, when, I'm like oh, I missed something in the top right corner. And it's like, like OG Simpson. <laughs> I see what you did there, act then. Ultimately, this new change would have created more problems than it would solve. So Blizzard scrapped it. Just, just so you know, I saw old Ogremar, and God damn it, I hate you. I even did World of Warcraft work. I actually polished World of Warcraft, um, old 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 Orgrimmar city inside of the game, and I have a and I have a video of it posted on YouTube. And I hate the new Ogremar so much that they designed. I fucking hate it. But the fact that Real ID was even considered as a possibility, let alone planned to be implemented across the board, was really just such a bizarre, out of touch thing to, to even attempt. And then there's this. I work in a charity. If they see I am a gamer, it could affect my employment prospects. Gamers have been oppressed since 2010, baby. But the outrage seemed to be only temporary. I work in a heat and frost insulation union. That's uh, you know a government job, and if if you tell them you're a gamer, they give you the look. So people are judgmental, and some people take it too far if if they learn you're a gamer. So I can relate to that statement, but I don't give a shit if I tell them I'm a gamer anyway. But I can relate to the statement of why you would feel that way. If we only knew what was in store for us down the line. Blizzard has a long list of battles in the courtroom, none more famous than Valve Corporation v Activision Blizzard. This of course was over the legal rights to Defense of the Ancients, the most popular custom game for Warcraft 3. And it was a battle for the ages. Two of the biggest and most successful PC developers duking it out. Who will come out on top? From what I understand, Valve worked with Dota developer Icefrog who was later hired by them, and they wanted to trademark Dota as their intellectual property. Blizzard, of course, didn't want that. I don't want it. But Valve had already filed a trademark. Now, it's complicated, but for whatever reason, Blizzard and Valve settled out of court, with Valve keeping the rights to Dota All-Stars for commercial purposes, and Blizzard would be able to use it within their own custom games. This appears to have been a mutual Wait, agreement, but agreement, this appears would be able to use it within their own at least that's how i understand point being is basically got shaped up the buffalo real bad on this one custom yeah, games okay this appears to have been a mutual agreement but with hindsight we see just how badly blizzard was shafted nobody yeah. thought dota would turn into the massive esports juggernaut that it is yeah. today but you have to wonder how could blizzard that's not true a lot of times, and I'm since I played Warcraft 3, this mod, um, we were also playing Team Fortress 2. 
uh, later down the line. And uh, Team Fort uh, Half Life, what uh, Team Fort Half Life evolved into Team Fortress Two later on into the game. And I still think even back then, I'm not really sure, but I still think that even back then. Blizzard did not notice how important Dota was. Every time you went on the custom games, Dota was played. Dota was fucking played. Now, maybe it wasn't called Dota back then, but I still think it was called Dota back then. And I remember the developer was Icefrog. And it was very successful. I played it. I can still remember this day when I played it. I loved playing it. I don't like League of Legends at all. I don't like Dota. For some reason, I grew up and, and fell in love with the Dota from Warcraft 3. And I could just could never let it go. And when the new Dota came out that wasn't Warcraft 3, I wasn't really a fan of it. I, I, I guess I loved Warcraft 3 too much that I couldn't leave the Dota from it. And people were still playing Dota in Warcraft 3, even though... It became a game later on. So that has a lot to say about just how powerful Dota was, how much it was played regularly. And if you as a company cannot notice there's a cash grab there, it's your fault. Valve noticed it. Well, I, I guess Gaben noticed it, or whoever the fuck it was that noticed it, that Half-Life had a very good mod, and they got that mod, Team Fortress, and it evolved into Team Fortress. Valve paid attention to the communities, even of other games, it seems, but they never paid attention, I mean, sorry, Blizzard, Blizzard Entertainment never paid attention to their own, back then, at least. Just let the magic lamp slip through their hands. <laughs> Many fans lost faith in Blizzard's ability to retain the right and provide the games they wanted. World of Warcraft has been Blizzard's main moneymaker for years with a large, diverse, dedicated community. Throughout the Burning Legion and Wrath of the Lich King expansions, the game only grew in size. Cataclysm was a bit rocky, but it wasn't until May 2012 that Mists of Pandaria released, and a large portion of fans voiced their discontent. This was really the turning point for World of Warcraft and what turned many people off of that game. Blizzard reported that 14% of users had cancelled their subscriptions, a loss of 13 million players, after a brand new oh, expansion one, that's supposed uh, to build the game up. Much. Shortly after this, Blizzard stopped publicizing their subscription numbers as showing a Why? steady decline might further exacerbate the decline. Oh, yeah, right. okay. There were many controversial changes to WoW over the years. Among many was the Dungeon Finder an expedited way of finding players for raids and instances. Initially, you had to rally up a group of friends or other players and all commit hours to tackling these intense dungeons. And that was a lot of fun, it created so much community interaction. Many of WoW's community-oriented features were made more accessible at the cost of player agency. World of Warcraft started to feel less like a world and more of an automated experience. Why leave the main city if you can just hop into a queue and find a raid or instance anyways? In some ways, I'm willing to give Blizzard the benefit of the doubt for WoW's decline in popularity. Keeping a game alive for that long is going to have some speed bumps. And even though many fans have disagreed with the direction Blizzard has taken, at least they finally came out with WoW Classic. And both games seem to be coexisting peacefully. Okay, I'm gonna pause here and rewind to. Uh, let's see. Uh... Okay, here, here we go. I'll rewind to this so I can start explaining. Now, as a player, as an avid player of Classic and Burning Crusade, Burning Crusade I mainly played. That's kind of also a region. Uh, kind of the time I also kind of started. I played Classic. I religiously play classic. 
and it was mainly on a very good good private server that was scripted very good uh, but I also went to original because I wanted to see how original is like and then I went to Bernie Crusade and I solved dungeons in Bernie Crusade and then I went raiding in Bernie Crusade and back I returned in a private server again before Wrath was released because I just didn't want to pay for my Bernie Crusade account. Basically, as soon as I was finished content and I couldn't wait anymore and I finished all my content a lot of fast because I was just a... When, when you're a kid, you don't know fucking time. You don't care about time. You're gonna just going to go through there. You're going to complete all the games. So here's my commentary about Classic. Classic was an adventure. You made up the character. You made your own story as you were leveling through Classic. And a lot of things from Warcraft 1, Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3 even, was brought back into World of Warcraft. And so it was good to be unite, reunite with my lore again. It was very cool to explore all these places, to be in a world like Warcraft 4. And I was really sad that, my apologies, that Warcraft 4 was never released as a result of World of Warcraft. And the Burning Crusade, compared to Classic, in Classic, a rogue with green armor could kill an epic warrior with full legendary, well, with with a legendary and full epic gear, just like that. Because that's how fucked up the rogue was in Classic. And then if you move on to Burning Crusade, I felt they did really good with the balancing of every, every single class. PV was fun. The bash system was beautiful. The way you can spend the currency... In, in, even to help your own buddies with that badge of justice currency was awesome. Um, in order to... Let me think about it here. What else? Oh yeah, the, the tier system. Beautiful. The attunement quests. Beautiful. They were all still there. World of Warcraft had a sense of progression. And a lot of people say that World of Warcraft um, died when the Lich King died. I entirely disagree there, because it's, as you can see by the chart here, it apparently says that around time of when they started entering the age of cataclysm is when it started to sink down. So people were still having hope, and that's the thing about Wrath. When Wrath came, I was so hyped to fight Arthas. I, I loved the lore of the Lich King. I loved the Death Knights. And I switched from a Paladin immediately to a Death Knight because I wanted to play a Death Knight so badly. But when you play a Death Knight, and when you also learn that there's also another legendary besides the Warglaze of Asenoth, that were the only legendary I remember in the Burning Crusade, honestly, and Wrath of the Lich King was that Ulduar Mace, the legendary for healers. It made healers over fucking power. I mean, any spellcaster could use it, but it made the healers very fucking overpowered in arenas, especially when they were paired with somebody with a Shadowborn. Human racial changed. The human racial became a PvP fucking trinket, and racials from every expansion up were fucking unbalanced. The Horde had very a very powerful racial racial and the first expansion. And uh, the undead horde, so the Forsaken. And I think they tried to balance that out, but they couldn't. And to this day they still have racials, and they're still unbalanced as fuck. But they're keeping those racials in, no matter what. Uh, tunements in Wrath of Lich King began to disappear. There was no single badge. There was five badges. Uh, it, I think it was the Badge of Justice. No, Emblem. No, sorry. Emblem of Heroism. Uh, emblem of Valor. Emblem of Conquest. Emblem of Triumph. And Emblem of Frost. There you go. Five fucking emblems. I remember it pretty vividly because I even modded for World of Warcraft. Because I wanted that feeling of progression bad so bad that I that I worked on a World of Warcraft project trying to make it progressive. I wanted to mix a, a Wrath of Lich King and Burning Crusade sort of progression because that's how much I missed the progression from Burning Crusade. That's how, my, how much I missed uh, Tears. That's how much I missed that you require reputation to solve certain things and enter certain areas. That's how much I missed the Dungeon Keys. And Wrath of the Lich King removed every single thing related to an attunement. A progression system. That's when things started to fall down in Wrath of the Lich King. Every patch that came out, it just made started to make everything 
way more easier. And it pissed me off. And so when the Lich King came, and when I finally killed the Lich King, and found out that every single player can just go to Forge of Souls, the Halls of Reflection, and uh, I forgot the second um, dungeon in that area, but point being is, they could just go to the Epic Dungeon, get all the best gear from the Epic Dungeon, and just easily skip a lot of raids and go into Ulduar immediately, along with the Trial of the Crusader, before they would have to go to Icecrown Citadel. And I found out so fucking stupid. They removed two emblems, so that tier progression emblem of heroism, I think, heroism, heroism? Yeah, I keep mixing them up and my language is not really primary English, but heroism, uh, uh, they removed two emblems basically, tier one and tier two emblems. They kept tier three, tier four, tier five, and sorry, tier five, and that's how the game progressed. Only by three t emblems instead of five. Why don't you just keep the old badge system and don't make it complicated? But that's the thing, around Wrath of the Lich King time is when they began to lose their sense of identity, in my opinion. They just started to make things easier. And the only thing keeping it alive, and I'm sad to say it, is the World of Warcraft lore. The lore was captivating and intriguing and Everybody was fucking hyped for being a Death Knight. Everybody was hyped to see the Lich King, to fight the Lich King. The Lich King, to this day, is one of the last memorable battles I have in World of Warcraft. But Wrath of the Lich King also reused Naxxramas, which I didn't like. You should have made something new, not just reuse Naxxramas, but they reused Naxxramas. Um, they um, introduced Strand of the Asians. Trial of the Crusader was just... It was shitty. The PvP went unbalanced because of the legendaries. The racials got even more unbalanced. The racial abilities, whatever. And then, if you go into Cataclysm, Orgrimmar City changed. And a lot of people started to pay for re-rolling their characters from Horde into the Alliance. Just because, and, I'm, and I speak truthfully here when I say this, just because they didn't want to see Orgrimmar again. They hated Orgrimmar. And it's around that time that a lot of people say, said, Oh, I wish I could go back before Cataclysm times. And as soon as they started saying that, I knew that people hated Orgrimmar. And when you see the talent tree system, and just how broken every class was, how every class changed compared to the Wrath talent system and everything before that, you kind of felt that the classes lost their identity. A Death Knight in fucking Cataclysm compared to Wrath of the Lich King, compared to Wrath of the Lich King, I felt like I was playing Call of Duty with that guy. All I remember is that it was also super easy to play him. All I had to do, to do was use Howling Blast, Frost Strike after I used a lot of Howling Blasts, Necrotic Strike to weaken the healer to the point that he can't even heal himself. Death Knight and Cataclysm, when it came to arenas, was fucking brutally unbalanced. Playing a fucking Frost Death Knight. They totally failed at class balance and Cataclysm. Fucking failed. And if you played a human plus a Death Knight, you were a fucking god. But I never switched from Horde to Alliance. Never did. I always remained Horde. And the last place I ever logged out was, was in Thunderbluff. They remade the entire world. And as soon as they remade the entire old world, people didn't like World of Warcraft anymore because the world they used to know now felt unfamiliar to them. Burning Crusade added something to the world. Wrath of Lich King added something to the world. But they didn't change the world, the original world. If you added some extra areas in the game, and if you just touched up on those empty areas and made the world expanded, and maybe Gilmas you could have entirely remodified, no one would really care if you remodified one sector, or if you remodified the town a little bit. 
but you remodeled the whole thing that people made it, it, it was unrecognizable. I did not like, love Cataclysm. In Burning Crusade, I thought the only reason we flew was because of flying mounts. You know, and, and, and because in Outland, it's Outland. So if you fly there, it's okay. It's, it's not that big as Azeroth. And Blade's Edge Mountains, another storm, was kind of in the middle of nowhere. So you still have to fly a good amount. In Wrath of the Lich King, everything just in Northrend, for me, seemed too close. Too easy to get to. And the professions were easier. Along with all the other stuff I just named. But also there was another thing that was bothering me. Oh yeah, that you could still fly. I wish in Wrath of Lich King that they remove the flying. You know, the, if they removed the flying in Wrath of Lich King, it would have made the world as ten times larger. And I thought because if if Wrath of Lich King was, you know, in Northrend, which is a part of Azeroth, that that we couldn't, you know, fly anymore. And and I was hoping for that, but that never came to be. And I was really sad to see that. And, I, and already in Wrath of Lich King time, I was wishing just to go back to Classic, because even in Burning Crusade, even though no matter how much hard grinding Classic was, I wanted to go back to Classic, because being mounted on the ground just makes the world bigger, larger. It gives you more time to enjoy the game, to sink into the game, to, to fall in love with the lore, to explore the environment. Uh, to go behind this corner, it gives the developers a lot more variety. And I know that people will disagree with me, and Final Fantasy has this and that, yes, but that's the world of Warcraft that you played. Classic was the first release, where it just, it felt like the RTS. You're on the ground, and you're exploring regions. But as soon as that vanished in Burning Crusade, I didn't like it. And Wrath of Lich King, I didn't like it, but that's me. And I'm just sharing my personal experiences with you. And then in Cataclysm, a lot of people, and I'm sure it's not just me that felt this way, we, we were okay. We, we accepted BC, we accepted Wrath, because we were expecting something, an expansion again from Blizzard, and we said, okay, if we have to sacrifice flying, as long as it's not just all over the place, and just in the Bur Burning Crusade and Wrath of Lich King zones, okay, fine, let, let flying be available there. Just don't make it available ever in Azeroth because people loved PPing in Azeroth because nobody could escape on the flying mount away from combat. That's why I love being a Death Knight in Cataclysm because every time somebody was escaping with a fucking flying mount, I could just death grip them and kill the living Jesus out of them with chains of ice and multiple strikes, and my friend would always be a priest or a warlock, so he could always expect a fear being thrown in the mix. So I was really fucking disappointed when Cataclysm was released because World PvP died. And when World PvP dies, what the fuck is the point of PvP? Now I have to be bound in battlegrounds. Now an alliance could reach me from, the, from all across Storwind on a flying mountain attack me, no matter where I was, how I was. It didn't make infiltration of enemy cities or public areas interesting anymore. It killed the World of Warcraft that I played. I could name a thousand other reasons why I felt it did, but I could go into detail. <laughs> but here's where we get into the real shit. Maybe it was just my experience, but I vividly remember the launch of Diablo 3 as being one of the single most disappointing game launches of all time, next to MCC. What? It was that bad. <laughs> Not only had basically all of the depth been stripped away from Diablo 2, not only did it feel like a poor man's version of Diablo 2, but it was also just straight up broken. I waited years for this game and within four hours of gameplay I was like, this ain't it chief, and never looked back.
The always online and DRM features were heavily criticized, totally unnecessary for people wanting to just play single player. Single player is it, says Diablo 3. Mind if we force you to play online anyway in case you change your mind? Kind of do as it happens, Diablo 3. Sorry, can't hear you over the sound of all my money. The art direction was criticized. It didn't feel hellish. Gameplay story was awful. Excessive amounts of useless gear with 1% of that shit being actually usable. Everything was a bust. It just didn't feel like Diablo. The sanctity of this place has been fouled. Diablo 3 was the subject of numerous complaints by fair trade organizations across the world. In France alone, a consumer group reported that there were 1,500 complaints in four days. The organization... Forgive me. K. Choicier. K. Choicier. Asked Blizzard to, and this is my translation, tell us when the fuck the game is going to be playable. Be straight up, okay? Be a fucking homie. Blizzard responded by saying, there's a sticker on the box that says, internet connection required. Fuck you! The Fair Trade Commission alleged that Blizzard had violated consumer rights laws in South Korea. Hundreds of gamers from there demanded refunds, which Blizzard refused to grant until a month later. In Germany, the Federation of Consumer Organizations threatened legal action against Blizzard for their lack of transparency, with the DRM, consumers' inability to resell the game, and then there was the auction house. A feature Blizzard implemented to make everyone's gaming experience much better, right? WRONG! If the gameplay wasn't shallow enough, this fucking atrocity of a feature made it so players could literally put in real money to buy the best gear. This undercut the entire point of playing Diablo 3. The quest for gear comes from playing the game, killing monsters, doing quests. That's what makes it fulfilling. Not by entering your credit card information. It was one of the earlier and more egregious forms of microtransactions as Blizzard took a cut of all the profits. It took them two years to realize how damaging the auction house was and would shut it down completely in March of 2014. At this point, we all started to worry and wonder, how could Blizzard continue to get into legal trouble? How could this company with a stainless track record bungle it so badly with Diablo 3? How could they betray us? We didn't live up to the high standard no shit. that we really set for ourselves. I fucking remember that quote. Just a note there for, for Diablo. My mother played part one and part two. I've never played it. But I came every day and I watched her play it. I was actually interested in Diablo. Very interested. And uh, there was there was these times if something was too difficult for her. She would ask one of her sons to sit down and solve it for her, to complete it for her. And I, I'm sure there's a lot of people like that in other people's families that ask somebody's help because they're not good as or as great as gaming as um, other people are, right? But over time, she learned to like Diablo to the point that she was obsessed about it, about obsessed about its difficulty, and she loved. She loved only that game in terms of the RTS. She hated Warcraft 3, but she loved Diablo. And with the newest Diablo release, and she, she was there, she, she pre-ordered it. She was hoping to, uh, you know, she, she actually unwrapped it and went to play it. She was very disappointed. I have never seen my mother more disappointed in her life. Very. She was distraught and she was furious. She wanted a refund immediately. After just, I'd say, I think two and a half, no, no, a week, a week of playing a week, but she wasn't as consistently playing it as she did Diablo 1 and 2. She just hated Diablo from that day and never returned to the game again. Ever. And she was playing it over a laptop. 
now she plays Guild Wars. That's how bad Diablo was. That you had to lose one very good, loving player to another company. Just because that's how bad you've done, done fucked up. So I wonder how other people who love Diablo also switch to another game after that. And how much subscriptions they've lost after that. Point being is, Diablo was so bad that even my mother didn't love it. And I didn't know about the rest, what they did, like the auction houses and stuff, until this video informed me. And it's like a timeline. It's a timeline video. And the more I watch it, the more in pain I feel and sympathy for all those people, including myself, who are wasting their time hoping in Blizzard. As WoW continued to lose subscribers, fans took it upon themselves to recreate the WoW game they wanted. Many private servers popped up offering different iterations of WoW that were no longer playable. Do you think when Burning Legion came out that it was the best? Here's your server. Wrath of the Lich King, here's your About those two servers, I love them both. I was considering playing Netherwing. And I did play Netherwing. Because a friend told me, go play it. I like it. But I didn't have time to invest in it like I used to. Sunwell. I know it's going to do a do great. And there was another server, Dalaran Wow, I, I think it was. And it was very well done as well. And I need to tell to the pri private servers, fucking innovate already. Innovate. Try something new. Don't just try to do World of Warcraft, Lich King original. Innovate. Try to mix it up with Burning Crusade or Classic or something. I'm just tired of prior servers being original, but I understand. There's not a lot of original servers out there. And at the same time, there's also not a lot of communities that understand the World of Warcraft community. For instance, I was working on this server, a private server, that, that believed that Twin King to level 19 you know, like a level 19 twink server is going to be fun. I, I totally disagree. I just don't think what the hell you, you can find fun about a level 19 private server and Lich King. I, I just don't. When I was developing World of Warcraft, I wanted to release Mount Hyjal to the players pre-cataclysm, not cataclysm, but pre-cataclysm. Uh, I wanted to make them in visit the unused dungeons like the unused Scarlet Monastery, uh, the Emerald Dream, uh, which is a raid, which is an unused raid. I wanted them to visit those things. Uh, the Ajara Crater, I wanted them to visit that too. And every time I ask the uh, I ask developers or try to meet a team that just wants to add something new to the game, there was this one classic server that reused old content but that's the thing. They they reused old content, but they did not renovate. They did innovate. Sorry, they did not reuse Mount Hyjal. I wish that they did something new to show Blizzard that people want to go back in time, but they also want something new from that time. Built up an expansion over that, but uh, private servers don't do that nowadays. And a lot of people, a lot of private servers are cash for grab. They say it's to sustain their servers. Yeah, but Nostalgia didn't really have any, any donations. They didn't have any need anyone to pay. But I understand why you need donations. And I understand that the servers are there. But I am i don't like when people just donate. I, I, I fucking hate that. I, I just do. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like donations. I, I don't. You know? And I hate when it's pay to win. And a lot of Cataclysm servers were paid to win, like Monster Well. Jesus, was that a broken server? But point being is, I love these servers that exist, but I believe they would get more attention if you also gave the players something new. So if you really want to reach out to Blizzard and tell them how, just how much they fucking suck, reuse the old content that exists in game. The unused Scarlet Monastery, the Emerald Dream. In Classic, you can reuse the old Outlands. You can fucking map edit them. And I've seen people renovate and innovate through the entire game 
and it just doesn't resemble World of Warcraft, the original World of Warcraft, or it doesn't feel like the original World of Warcraft. So I feel that the community today in World of Warcraft, compared to the past, does not understand World of Warcraft. Just like Blizzard does not understand its fan base or World of Warcraft. Server. Vanilla. Here's your server. Nostalrius. It wasn't legal, but it showed a surprising demand for that classic vanilla experience. At its height, Nostalrius had 800,000 registered accounts. Naturally, having that many people flock to a service that you don't operate is bad for business, and in this case, copyright infringement. The solution? Shut it down, boys. They pulled out their Warhammer, <laughs> sent a cease and desist order, and Nostalrius was shut down. After a by demons be driven, the, the last orc cinematic. Fuck, I love when Grom died in this one, and I, I miss you, bro. But the world of Draenor of you sucks. The world of Draenor is shit compared to the real OG Grom Hellscream. But that only seemed to further agitate the already upset fan base. A petition popped up begging Blizzard to consider. Special shout out, Asmongold, your ball. A vanilla version of WoW. It received over 280,000 signatures. They couldn't deny the facts anymore. A lot of people didn't like WoW anymore, and they wanted the old version. And naturally, Blizzard was upset because they felt fans weren't appreciating or understanding the work they were putting in. Remember that one bug that really pissed you off that we fixed like two years ago? Still there in the past. While it was within their rights to terminate the server, Jesus for the three place. and a half years, no alternative was offered by Blizzard. And this was made all the- that, That's like boiling the pot right there and just making people more aggravated for not doing anything for three years. But I guess I understand. No, I don't understand. You had the code and everything. Uh, why couldn't you just- Nostalgia's probably provided you the- Why wouldn't you just release classic and new? Ah, who knows what they were thinking or doing. All the more worse, when J. Allen Brack, the new CEO, answered this question. Have you ever- My friend was obsessed with this when this happened. And he constantly reminded me of this as we were playing World of Warcraft. And I feel him. I understand him. I totally can relate to him. Have ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. And, and by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. Here's Warcraft 3 would fucking prove you wrong. The lesson in healthy business practices. Don't tell your consumers what they don't want. <laughs> Show them why they want what you're working on. Better yet, listen to what your fans are asking for. The pens, Ackman. The pens, what they're asking for. Or, and meet that demand. There's no. Meet it, yes, but be careful as well because some of them are just fucked in the head. No point in showing this kind of contempt towards your audience unless your goal is to purposely damage your own reputation and goodwill. And then J. Allen Brack started talking shit about Classic WoW, how their expansions were so orgasmically good. Remember when you had to like spam cities and say need a tank need a tank need a tank during the burning crusade days you don't remember that because now you just push a button that says go to the dungeon you would be a fool to want the older obsolete inferior version of wow don't fucking patronize me you all heard my rant about world of warcraft and the dungeon finder and everything so i'll just leave it at that with the shutdown the nostalrius team went to blizzard's hq and gave an 80 page essay on the development of the server it looked and sounded like Blizzard was going to work with some of the Nostalrius devs to create WoW Classic. That would have been awesome. Bred some goodwill with the community, and these developers would make great representatives of that community. It would inspire faith in the company, but they never actually worked with them, and it really shows the sinful pride of Blizzard. For a long time, they just couldn't accept the fact that fans didn't like the newer expansions. It gave me that feeling. As if Blizzard Entertainment started young again, if Nostalgius would work on their team. 
it felt to me that there would still be hope for Blizzard if they accepted somebody who wasn't out for the money inside of their company to work on World of Warcraft Classic. And I was hoping that maybe if Nostalgias joined them, they would also be like, hey, 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 Burning Crusade. Hey, hey, Wrath of the Lich King server, as they were then. And then it never, it never happened. And I kind of knew even before that, but now, even for, for sure now, that it was just fucked, doomed. And how WoW was changing, but they were the ones out of touch, not the community. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones, phone, right? BlizzCon is the annual convention held by Blizzard. It's a massive, exciting event that showcases and promotes all their major franchises. Celebrities make appearances, famous bands close out the show. It's just epic. Who's this guy? This is a dwarf. And uh, his... I never attended any BlizzCon in my life. I always wanted to, but now I don't want to anymore. That's how far they've fallen. You know what? I prefer a little person. Well, um, okay. Not many developers have an entire convention at their disposal. And it's just Blizzard's way oh, of showcasing their power, getting fans hyped to consume product. But in 2018, BlizzCon became the opposite of that. Hear ye, hear ye, fans of Diablo. Behold the new experience. I always watch their announcements, and for Cataclysm, I was kind of excited when it first released. And then I was disappointed after what the expansion became. And then when Mr. Pandaria trailer released, I didn't even want to watch BlizzCon. And it's not because it's an Asian setting, there I said it, or a Chinese setting. It's because of a lot of other reasons I don't like it. I kind of played a little bit of Mists of Pandaria at the very start. And people will say, oh, you will have to play it entirely to get it. I, I even played a private server with it, and I still fucking hate it. A private server, I know, it's not as original. But the server I played on was pretty good. Like, it, it, it had a lot of good stuff to it. And I know it was broken here and there. But I played the main first two patches in original, and I already didn't like it. If you don't like it in the first two patches, why will you like the expansion? The talent system tree was so squished, unrecognizable. Everything in the game was broken. The priest class was broken. My friend couldn't play the priest. That's how bad it was broken. And he would text me and send me images and videos and tell me, look how this is broken. Look how this is broken. I told him, dude, I don't give a shit. I canceled my subscription a long time ago. And Cataclysm is the cataclysm of WoW. It was. Lich King did not die when, you know, the, the game did not die when the Lich King died. World of Warcraft died when Wrath started. People were just too hyped for the next expansion and too hyped for the lore. That's the only reason they stayed. But lately, they can't even get the fucking lore right. What you've been waiting for, Diablo for Immortal. So we knew we want to use mobile devices as the platform for a new Diablo game. Because nothing brings a family together like slaying demons. You want to explain yourself? What are you doing? People were confused. And through a series of hilarious questions in the faces of the developers, the situation started to get out of hand. So how long has Diablo Immortal been in development and how is it affecting other Diablo projects? <laughs> well, you may or may not have heard. I can't imagine the embarrassment of having the crowd of people at your own convention turn against you. But it should showcase just how out of touch you are with them. Okay. In particular, the majority of the games are PC oriented with Blizzard, Hearthstone being one of the other mobile games. Banjo, Tui, Main Hub World. I, I, I just love your use, you, you, uses of Banjo, Kazooie, and Tui, and I played that game. I, I love, I love Banjo. Games. Why bring it to mobile? Are you trying to reach a new audience of players? 
What we remember about BlizzCon 2018 is the charcoal remains of the PR oh, department. Sorry, hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out-of-season April Fool's joke? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, no. Blizzard said they were surprised by the negative response. What? Now, either they're lying or they are once again supremely and genuinely out of touch with their community. Am I so out of touch? No. Blizzard, your fan base is mostly a PC gamer demographic. Those are the people who buy tickets to BlizzCon. If you want to make a phone game, make a phone game. But don't expect your fans to give a shit or not bombard you with questions like, Is there any plan? This would have worked, Diablo Immortal would have worked, if they released Diablo 4 along with it. And no one would have complained. But instead, they released it on its own. On its own. And it's not a PC game, it's a mobile game. I would be really pissed off too if I was a Diablo fan. So, I understand. Plans to make this playable on PC, or is this a strictly mobile forever? You get nothing! Blizzard's ideals and principles were shelved in favor of tapping into the mobile gaming market. If you didn't think they were selling out with the auction house, you sure did now. Did you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones, phone, right? You can play on your tablet too. Hey, that really sucked! Video game development is notorious for how hellish it can be. An extremely competitive market filled with stressful deadlines, long, wait minute, wait how hellish it can be. An extremely competitive market filled with stressful deadlines, long hours, hectic work weeks, and worst of all, uncertainty of consistent employment. When a game is finished and out the door, many employees... I don't believe that game developers really have their own agency. And if they do, could you tell me more about that, the viewer, please? I Just like um, people who do voice, record, voice recording, I don't think they have their own union that represents them as well as much. But at the same time, I'm happy they don't because I have a union and it fucking sucks have to wonder if they too will be sent out. Well, Blizz- Wait, 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 what, what was that? Oh man, so sorry buddy. Sent out. Well, so Blizzard answered that question by laying off 800 employees in February of 2019. 800 people with families and lives and an income that a lot of people were surprised. I wasn't surprised. They need benefits, insurance, gone. Well, employees, this has been real educational and all, but now it's time to part with that old Activision Blizzard saying, Get the fuck out of my building! During this time, Activision Blizzard reported $7.5 billion in sales, $1.8 billion in pure profit. Crack the goddamn champagne bottles, what an accomplishment! You guys remember the Wii U? Yeah, it was pretty gross and flopping super hard back in 2014. This is the main thing that hooked me uh, when, I, when, when I was listening to the headphones. This, is, this part came up, and when he said something about the Nintendo developers, it touched my heart so much, that's when I truly fell in love with this video, Ackman. Act and you cover the details perfectly. And because of you, now I'm actually looking to the old Nintendo games and the new ones, and I really want to see what they're about after, you know, you, you've always given them a good review. And, and I didn't know. Nintendo was not looking good. And at that point, the boss, Satoru Iwata, took a pay cut to keep his employee. I didn't know this, that he would slash his salary in half like thirty percent dive in like this, what you what you're telling that that he did for his company. Employees employed. That was at a time when Nintendo saw a thirty percent decrease in profits. People look to big companies for guidance. We want to feel good about where our money is going. 
Is it going to Bobby Kotick's wallet? Or is it going to the people down and dirty on the front lines who sometimes work 70 plus hours a week? Nintendo made a statement about the importance of- And I read this part too, but I'll read it too. Nintendo CEO Satoru Iwate should take 50% pay cut for five months to tone for losses at the game giant. While other senior executives, executives, including Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto, will forego 20 to 3 percent of their salaries. To have such loyal, passionate, dedicated members give up even their salaries that much just to keep your employers employed, I can only imagine of how much heart, how much spirit, how much thought how much motivation that inspired and the developers of Nintendo after they did this for them. Japan has one of the best developers. I hate China for what they're doing to us here, but I'm not blaming China. I'm blaming the developers here in Canada and America in Mexico and abroad, everywhere besides Japan. Japan, I respect you as a nation. I really want to see your nation one day. I really want to see your people, and I probably won't for the rest of my days. It's really sad that I won't. But you inspire me. You inspire the game industry. Please go forward. And Nintendo, you are the face of Japan for me in that regard after what you've done to your employees I will respect you until the day I die of their employees and Blizzard did the same they were just radically opposite statements I get that a company may take on more workers than they need over time and Activision Blizzard might not have been able to find a place for these 800 lost souls but does that make it any less disheartening for a company to be celebrating its greatest success without sharing that with some of the people who made that happen. In June 2003, the leaders of the Diablo project left Blizzard North. Feeling like they weren't involved with the big decisions anymore and unable to guarantee their own employees' compensations and futures, the Blizzard North executives protested. They even went so far as to tender their resignations unless they were heard. Unfortunately, those resignations were accepted. In 2019, perceptions around Blizzard had completely changed. And in October of 2019, a professional Hearthstone player, the martyr Blitz Chung, made a political statement in support of the Hong Kong protests while on a live stream. Nuclear launch detected. As Americans, we are naturally sympathetic to those who have had their freedom stripped away. Un Ackman, to be fair, your people during the White House protest supporting Trump carrying a Nazi flag. I hardly doubt that America supports anything anymore. But I respect where you came from, your patriotism. And I know it's not a political platform, but as of the state of America lately and companies, American companies selling out to China, I don't really think that flag is the same as it used to be. I'm sorry. Fairly. They say a man never really knows himself until his freedom's been taken away. Such as the undisputed case in China. Now, I'm not trying to grandstand, but China isn't exactly the paragon of human rights. Yet Blizzard's monetary ties- I respect that, what you said. I'm not going to grandstand and thank you. Everybody needs that warning before they you know, get offended. I, 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 didn't, I wouldn't get offended, but I'm saying good job on doing that. ...to China, like many other US companies, they have to tiptoe around China's strict guidelines to release their products in their country. They are very picky and very profitable. Back in Wrath of the Lich King days, I remember my friend, uh, he was from China. And he showed me this 
image. It was Lord Maravgar, the first boss in the Wrath of Lich King raid uh, of Ice Crown Citadel. And he's a creature made out of bones. And he showed me a picture of Maravgar with flesh on him because the Chinese people were offended by foams displaying. They were also offended by green eyes, I think. And I was like, are, are you fucking serious? And I was so glad that sort of censorship wasn't um, in America. But the fact that World of Warcraft had a separate patch, a separate type of WoW for Chinese users pissed the fucking hell out of me. And are Hollywood movies getting affected by China? Yes. Canada is the main... suffers heavily from Chinese occupation. That's how, I, how, how I'm going to call it. Um, there's a lot of illegal things going on in Canada that I don't want to talk about. If you thought the U.S. is bad with companies selling out to the Chinese people, there are certain parts in America that's, that are losing their identity to Chinese people. Now, I have nothing against Chinese people, and I'm a kind of a Star Wars person. I love multiple ethnicities. But you got to respect people's culture, man. And I feel that most Chinese people don't do that. I didn't say all. I said most. And those people back in um, China, like from, who are from China, when they first move here, they don't really care for you. They can't even understand your language most of the time. But when they start to, and when they actually grow up in your area, you kind of realize, yeah, okay, it, it's fine. You have to give people time. But if you're from communists, from communist, communist China, and if you're buying my corporations, moving on my turf, changing my culture, how you want to see fit, how you're censoring shit, then I'm going to put my foot, foot down and say, okay, I won't give you time. I'm going to be like, what on earth are you doing? And what on earth are you doing? China's actually a free and loving country. That I'm out. Not taking any chances. Blizzard banned his ass. Fuck those new casters. No payment. You're gone. You're banned. Hope you learn your lesson. Speaking out about human rights issues. On our platform. This is not a political platform. It People take huge offense. And Except it is. They always say things like these. But I feel the people who speak like this, even not Blizzard, even not Activision Blizzard, don't really mean it. I think most of the Americans don't mean a lot of this, even though it's everywhere in the media. They don't mean it. They just don't. And a lot of people don't feel this way. For example, if you go to Japan, do you know what a half who is in Japan? A half who is a half blood. If you need to identify people by having half blood and got a naming term fucking um, over them, and another Japanese word called the, I think it was the geija, geiji, I, I forgot the word, but basically it means foreigner. And if you're a foreigner in Japan, they're going to kind of treat you not nice. So every country still has that biased, bullshitting hatred about them. But even I do. But I have it for reasons. Like, I'm lenient. I will understand. I will give you time. I will give you my hand and I will help you. But if you walk all, all over me, why should I? Japan has strict laws for these reasons. And again, I respect Japan for it. But I don't really think you should classify people half-blood and foreigner. But if you want to live to some old traditions that you simply can't let go of, traditions that would help your society... Go ahead, but please don't evolve into another China. Please. It is when it's convenient for us. Now, I did a whole video on this subject. Please check that out if you are at all interested. I summarize it a lot more in depth, so I'll be brief. On its own, it's a fucked up decision. Yeah. But with the George Floyd protests, it also shows the real double standard and hypocrisy. 
You banned Blitzchung, docked his pay, fired the casters involved, all because he supported a protest in Hong Kong. And you have the gall to post this on Twitter, as if your company represents this statement wholeheartedly. Like Racism has no place in our society or any society. Again, most people, but... Except Hong Kong and China. The, those societies are cool. Nothing's wrong with them. All is well consumed product. Even if you weren't just another company morally grandstanding on these pro... I will say this from because I'm, I'm from Europe and I will say this. The Germans still resent the Poland people, the Polish people. The Polish still resent the German people. They don't say it out loud, but they do. The Bosnians still resent the Serbian people. The Serbians still resent the Croatian people. The Russians still resent America. America still resents Russia. They both keep uh, making propaganda about one another. And if you live both in Europe and the West, you kind of learn these things. You learn that propaganda is everywhere and permanent. In Croatian school, they don't teach you full history, and they always teach you that uh, Nazism, Nazism was bad, but they don't tell you the full story about Nazi things. In America, they teach you one side of the story, but they don't teach you a lot of other things. In Canada, Canada it's basically the same thing. In Germany, they don't mention a lot of the, Germ uh, the Nazi stuff. It's extremely forgotten. So the German youth that try to learn it on their own end up learning wrong things or not the entire full story. And then they end up being brainwashed and believing that the Nazi regime is a real thing. But America is also brainwashed right now that the Nazi regime is a real thing. So the people that fail with that, and I'm not getting political here, but the people who are failing with that is the government itself. They're failing so bad to educate their people that their, their people are be being brainwashed by themselves. And they also believe that the government is brainwashing them. And how can I blame them? They, they can't even find history, um, the truth on both sides. People have to find it themselves in, in the World War II channel by Indy Nidell and Mark Felton Productions, for instance, if they want to learn the story. The Japanese people and a lot of people from Japan that I know, I, I know a lot of people from Germany, Japan, Croatia, and, and I'll never forget what a person from Japan told me. And she told me that in Japan, they barely speak about it. And they always say that they lost and that, um, sorry, wait, uh, that they lost and that people outside are to blame. You know, like they, they got oppressed and they were trying to free and uh, liberate all of Asia and all that stuff. Uh, uh, no, you, you didn't. You, you, your country was fucked up. Admit it. Shogun's running your entire fucking archipelago. Yes, you were bound by a code of honor, but you went too far. You got too greedy. And you can't say you deserve to liberate everyone and to be on top of it. You're not everyone's liberator. Not everybody's asking for a liberator. Your intentions might be honorable. And you defended your homeland, but you were the cause that your homeland was invaded in the first place. Point being is, there's a lot to history a lot of people need to know. But history is behind us now. But today, people are unforgiving. And today, people do not know a lot of stuff. To the point that they turn a lot of lies and misinformation into reality. Now, this might not be a touching subject today. But I'm telling you, it's a very touching and concerning subject. Learn your history. Learn it properly. Don't watch BBC Channel History Channel shit. Watch Mark Felton Productions and Indy Nidell's World War II documentaries. I heavily recommend them. Oh. Oh. Even if you weren't... Blizzard had yet another PR nightmare on their hands. Base is under attack. Our town is under siege. We're being attacked. We are under we attack. Are under attack. Our our city. Are under the town attack. is under attack. When this news reached out, it even got me pissed that even I commented on their video how much I hated this. Now, they eventually reduced the punishment, but never actually directly addressed the criticism only vaguely stated that we will do better going forward. No shit. Jay Allen Breck deserves a lot of flack no for how he handled this situation. You're supposed to be a leader. 
And at this point, Blizzard employees were probably feeling Every decision you've made has led us from bad to worse. Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. The character's name is Kuehler. 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 Basically, I'm a big fan. Finally, we arrive to present day. Warcraft 3 Reforged. Oh. A dream come true for me. You have no idea. My brother bought it for me as a gift. For my birthday. I have to refund it. Imagine your brother buys you a gift. And it's so bad you have to refund it. Idea how badly I wanted to see the custom games and multiplayer revived and to get hyped about it as if Warcraft 3 was a brand new game. This is Blizzard's latest and most damning fuck up of all. With a chance to revitalize one of the most important video games of all time, with a chance to revive the community, get new gamers into it, into RTS games, a genre that has been dying. Blizzard left the Warcraft 3 community in a worse place than if they had never touched it. How can a company actually deteriorate a product's value 18 years later? That's a topic for your business class. Especially since the game still had an active community and you tore out features and content that they've enjoyed for years. This is the part I have a problem with, and I will and I will talk about it soon, because I was a heavy developer for Warcraft 3, and over time I saw the Hive Workshop community evolve. I played when freedom when the freedom slips away, where I didn't get the nickname Pirates, by the way, but I was a big fan of Rao Dao Zao's maps. I was a big fan of community maps, and uh, we even played Warcraft uh, Warcraft two player mode of the campaign. Those mods were being in the and being developed, and a lot of people wanted to make unique storage, unique mods, unique features. They wanted a Warcraft three reforged. We wanted a Warcraft three mod that has those kind of you know better textures and stuff. But we never knew what to expect. But I remember that um, I think his name was Ujimasa Hoyo and another a developer in High Workshop. Uh, they did fucking excellent when it came to de developing Archimond, uh, the models in game. And so I got to see these passionate projects of what Reforged could have been from the community. And I have to say the Reforged community did it much better. A, a lot better. Like the community of Warcraft 3, they did it a lot better. And I was working on a two player campaign and a regular campaign that uh, reforges the original one. And so when Reforge was being released, I was like, okay, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to wait. Maybe Reforge releases something and I could access those files and improve if I don't think that something. If they didn't add something properly and i'm a big fan of lore i'm a big fan of lore so when i saw lore in reforged and when people informed me about the changes later on <sighs> the way warcraft 3 launched is beyond belief but illustrates just how far detached blizzard has become from not only their past but their but so has the Hive Workshop community and the community of Warcraft 3. They've grown. They've grown past Warcraft 3. I will not get into the detail yet about it, but I will explain at the end of this Warcraft 3 commentary. Fans. We didn't live up to the high standards no that we shit. really set for ourselves. No shit. I speculate it was released in the state it was because of shareholder... It was the Mars movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know the whole movie like plot by heart, but I don't know the name of the movie. Pressure. Something that ex-members of Blizzard have... Max Schaffer was the developer of Diablo. And... Okay, the whole plan for is different. Than didn't have any influence. Yeah, okay. I've said is tan. 
Yes, and we didn't talk about shareholder value, Eric Schaefer said. We didn't talk about Chinese government, what they might want. The only thing we ever talked about was what we wanted to do, but the fans would like. That's how it should be. It's obviously not the case anymore. For better or worse, I don't blame them. They're a giant corporation. Giant corporation. I blame them. They made the decisions. But I understand from the developers of Diablo, but you guys handed in your resignation and they just said yes. I will fucking blame them until the day I die. Tampering the way the company used to operate. Fans were beyond upset. And Warcraft 3 Reforged rightfully takes the crown for lowest review score on Metacritic. <laughs> There was even a parody website called Warcraft 3 Refunded that just made fun of all the bullshit Blizzard had peddled about this game. I will and my friend kept throwing this video at me repeatedly. I won't go into every detail. I'll link some videos that do if you're interested. But he I, I actually already watched that, and I believe in every single sentence. Here are the main points. One. Blatantly misleading marketing led people to believe this classic title would have all its cutscenes remastered and remade. What we got was... I was excited for that. I was so fucking excited. Not that. In fact, Homeboy here actually showcases how the cinematography is... I already watched this too, and thank you, Exletios, Litalis, because this was perfect for Akman's video now that it showed here up here less dynamic and interesting Shout than the 2002 you. version. I'll hunt you to the ends of the earth if I have to. Do you hear me? To the ends of the earth! It is there that your true destiny will unfold. I'll hunt you to the ends of the earth if I have to. Do you hear me? To the ends of the earth! God, those were the days. It's like they didn't even try to. Tons of core features of the game from 2002-2003 were not re-implemented. Ranked ladders gone. If you play multiplayer, prepare to get ass blasted because there is no ranking system at all. 3. Art direction was butchered. Ew. Gross, what is that? Oh, sick. Original Warcraft 3 does look- I didn't try the multiplayer, but I tried the campaigns. Actually, let's, let's just Look watch. extremely dated, but everything is way more colorful and unique, recognizable. Four, classic Warcraft 3 and even Starcraft 1 had a system implemented to prevent people from being dropped from matches. If your connection was interrupted or a little shaky at times, you get like a 45 second countdown timer. And if your internet was good then, the match would continue. Reforged does not have this. Being pulled early on, Law Lider was trying to go for a greedy Ancient of War grip, and if this is ca That's an Ancient of War? I really didn't pay attention to that guy in the game, and thank god that I didn't because he's fucking ugly. Anyway, I played the human campaign, and I didn't get far, and I quit immediately when I saw something in the first mission, and I saw how it turned out, I didn't like it immediately. That's how much I was not satisfied with Warcraft. Cancelled! Oh which my! Oh damn! That was not a bad a, a BM a g leaving of the game. This was a disconnect once again. I'm Pretty almost 100% sure. sure. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah, I would never do this. Bad. Wait, there's enough mana. Yeah, I don't, I don't need a blood mage. I don't need you. You're benched. Once this at Blizzard. It looks like another drop. If your internet connection at Blizzard, like this was actually in Blizzard. Wow. Wow. Isn't perfect, you will be dropped from matches instantly. That was me. This happens even in campaign missions. That was me. Where you get an automatic mission failed screen. Mission failed. We'll go next time. A delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. Warcraft 3 Reforged represents Blizzard's complete lack of empathy or care for their older games and the fans who still play them. They just pissed on their own legacy. And these problems barely scratch the surface. And now Bl In 2006, Chris Metzen left Blizzard Entertainment, I think. Like, I think it was around that time. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe I got that wrong. But point being is... When he left, I felt... That was the last hope for World of Warcraft. And I think I was right.
Blizzard is forced to take their sweet time fixing things that never needed to be fixed. In the pursuit of money and... Well, before he continues... Miss Pandaria, it just didn't look like World of Warcraft at all. And I can see why a lot of things people didn't like and why a lot of, of the subscription numbers went down during Miss Pandaria. It just didn't look like... It looked like they were appealing to a Chinese audience and not their own audience. If you made something like Pandaria, you need to make it feel like old World of Warcraft, just like Lich King did. It gave you something new, something Viking related, but it also felt like old World of Warcraft. In Mists of Pandaria, it felt like you were Chineseing everything too much. You 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 just did it too much. You ruined the talent system tree, you broke the PvP, you introduced one of the most oh, wonderful battlegrounds, Temple of Cult Mogu. That's your only accomplishment in this expansion. The rest fucking sucked. And I know I'm going to have a lot of disagreements with that and flack, given, but so be it. That's how much I hated Mists of Pandaria. Um, now, as for, what was it, what was it? Oh yeah, Warcraft 3. The High Workshop community developed maps and stages and textures that did not look like Warcraft 3 and they label it as Warcraft 3. So the Warcraft 3 community had no fucking clue how to do Warcraft 3. And the little people that did were usually uh, shunned, forgotten. Um, they weren't given much attention, love, proper attention. and. Um, uh, their mods and models they've designed were just ignored. And I didn't like that. I liked putting the community maps and models together and the project that was developing, for instance, uh, the first mission of uh, uh, of um, Chapter 1, Strandbahad, with the human campaign, which is which is the Scourge of Lordaeron. Arthas Menethil enters a talks to Uther and he goes down and to explore Strandbahad and on the, may, on the way he meets Menach. And when I was working on that campaign, um, I didn't want to release until everything's fully done. And I wanted to give the players an experience they would uh, never forget with Warcraft 3. A, a new experience, a remake of the original game campaign. And I made uh, all of the NPCs stronger in Warcraft 3. I made uh, the di difficulties stronger. I changed the models, polished the models, but didn't change it from the original way if you know like I added a better texture resolution uh, and I made the units still remain recognizable but I gave them a unique also feeling to them right I introduced chaplains in chapter one so players could play with the chaplains uh, like which were these priests with the footmen and I didn't like overdo it and if you play two-player mode the second player could control the chaplains, and he could also, and you could also control instead of th two, three footmen that I replaced. I put Captain Falderick in there because that's how much I respected Warcraft Three lore. That I knew who Captain Falderick was, who Arthur Smenethil was. Uh, I knew the region of Strandbahad, and that in World of Warcraft, that it belonged to the Altaraki people that were crushed for betraying the alliance to the horde during the events i believe it was of warcraft 2. no no yeah i think it was a warcraft 2. uh you know it is warcraft 2 because that's when the horde came to 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 the planet of azeroth and there was another expansion to warcraft 2 which is why i'm confusing it point being is the altaraki people were the people of strandbarad right in my opinion in my personal opinion and the Bandit Clan, which was the Blood Hill Bandits Clan. So this is how much I worked on this project, that I know the name of every single organization in that map. The Blood Hill Bandits Clan was a clan that raided the Altarak village. And they were, in my opinion, Altaraki people, the, def uh, the, the descendants of the Syndicate. And when the remake came out Reforged, they actually did touch upon that, and those bandits were syndicate. But instead of expanding the story of the bandits in the region, of Strandbrahad, like I did, I added additional new sections to Strandbrahad. 
I did that with the little space I had in Stradbrad. I didn't change Stradbrad at all. I just gave the textures, uh, textures to the building, uh, moved the moved some of the buildings in the back that you that your camera never really looked at in the cinematics, and I added an extra section to the to the back of Stradbrad. I even had it at a hilltop that you could access through a tunnel, that you could go up there and uh, where the orcs were firing a catapult from down upon Stradbrad below, and they couldn't even fucking do that. Reforged. They didn't do nothing, and they destroyed the textures. They destroyed the models. Everything was ugly. The terrain was ugly. Terrain bugs were still present. If you tried to map in the world editor, you fucking couldn't. And just the way everything was labeled, and the fact that any mod that you now produced was instantaneously owned by Blizzard, I quit. Because if you can own the product I'm designing for you, what the fuck is the point of modding? What the fuck is the point of modding? And right now, Hive, the Hive Workshop is still working on a better Warcraft 3 Reforged than you have developed. But now that everything that the level developing is yours because you made it so by your, you know, like by your Warcraft 3 contract and rights issues. That community, whatever the developing is technically yours, is that's that's the way I understand it. But fuck you, buddy, if I'm ever going to develop for a communist company like yours, a company that bends over for others, unlike Japan. Now, you can personally go fuck yourself, Blizzard Entertainment, but I'm not angry at your staff. I'm angry at the leadership at the top. And I hope but I've lost all hope that you will ever be the old company that you are. And you've got a lot of flack over the years and it has inspired me to publish my book that I'm still in the process of publishing. And I would like to give a special shout out to Chris Metzen. I feel that you were overworked and that you went through a lot of drama. A lot of issues in your life. I don't know. Every time I saw you at BlizzCon, I don't even know what the fuck was going on. But I felt that you were being affected by something negative in the company. Something you couldn't explain. And I know a man's mind can be everywhere at once. But the way you spoke in your videos, you were the main reason I was inspired, inspired to try out World of Warcraft in the first place. And I think that when you left, even though I know you, you no, know, I don't think you were the ones who created the pandas. But I, but even though you were one of those developers, that you were one of those guys who put your heart and love into the story. When you left, I felt everything, the heart of Blizzard, the the very soul, died with you when you left. I felt that because. I felt you were kind of keeping the old people on their feet. The the people who actually didn't want to give in to corporate corporatization that corporate corporatization that was didn't want to keep it, to give in to the um, to the uh, to money. You didn't want to sell out. You were you weren't a sellout. And I like to tell people who are watching this video that he's he's making a new gaming company, um, War Chief. Gaming and look it up. I really wish I could be. My dream was to be one one day a part of Blizzard Entertainment, but now I dream of being a part of Warcraft Gaming because I'm hoping he goes on that old path that Blizzard used to be, that Blizzard used to represent, the heart of their communities. But I also hope that he takes it slow because I know he has a family and I know how just how much time consuming. Developing can be. I've developed an entire world of my own uh, for my book, and I and I know how exhausting it must have felt. But you brought it all to life in gaming, and I will always respect the passionate ways you had for your project because it reminds me of how passionate I am for mine. Let's get on with the video. Who knows what else? 
Blizzard has lost their identity, being one of the core titans of the industry, and seeing them fall so far, fall lower than the likes of Bungie, is just sad, man. The franchises they used to be known and loved for are not what they once were. Where they used to be dedicated towards the fans, now they are dedicated to the shareholders. It's no longer about what do the fans want, but rather, what can we get away with? Blizzard's sins are numerous. Attempting to disclose private information of their users to solve an issue that could have been fixed by better moderation. Introducing microtransactions that undercut the core design and fun factor of a game people waited 12 years for. Allowing a rival company to steal the commercial rights to one of the most popular games of all time. And also, Valve, develop a fucking game already. And for the love of God. Show Team Fortress 2 some updates, some love. Don't ruin the game like Blizzard did, but give them new maps or something. Like, Man vs. Machine? Please update Man vs. fucking Machine. Give us more maps, you know, bro? Even the community maps are fucking better. Please, do something. Show love to your fans. Don't let them just stand there. Your game will always be played in love. It has so much videos about it. It has so much community love to it. It's the only game now I love, I love playing because it still has a community. Special shout out to all Team Fortress 2 people out there. I love you with my heart and this video will probably never get watched. But well, special shout out to y'all. I love you all. I love Team Fortress 2. Valve, please update them. I love you too, but please update them. And don't release Half-Life, the one that you're promising to deliver over VR. Release the Half-Life that we want. That we deserve. That you deserve. Bring us back some nostalgia. What we like about you. What we love about you. Please, show some love to your fans and your community. For the love of fucking Jesus. For the love of fucking God. Changing WoW into something fans didn't want. Failing to provide fans with the experience they had been begging for until- That. That Valve. That. An independent group rose up to challenge Blizzard. Before that happens to you too, Valve. Before that happens to you too. Completely misreading their audience by building up hype at their convention. For a game their fans- Perhaps you're waiting for that and you want them to buy you out. You, you're waiting for, oh, sorry, you're waiting to buy them out. I see what your game is. Develop something, god damn it. Don't let the community just do it all for you. Fan base has never expressed interest in. Countless tone deaf, out of touch responses to valid criticism. Tossing out 800 employees like yesterday's trash during their most financially successful year. Punishing people who dare speak on important political and social issues taking a stand with China, letting internal strife and protests run rampant within the company, tarnishing their own legacy with a careless disregard for the state of Warcraft 3 Reforged. These are just the monumental blunders, the ones that have affected me the most. If you want to see current sentiment towards Blizzard, go to their YouTube channel, where the like-dislike ratio is... I already have, and I can relate to this up in the air and most videos have comments disabled and if you take wow just fucking wow in a consideration that blizzard said they were going dark on overwatch 2 information couple that with the diablo 4 reveal and it just seems like a desperate attempt to shift what the fuck was that that's diablo 4 really that doesn't look like nothing like Diablo at all. And I meant like from that game genre. I hope you lose people at BlizzCon. Oh wait, it's canceled. You already have the next BlizzCon. Players focus from what a shithead company they've been to whoa, look at these new titles. But that's just my theory. Blizzard has proven time and time again where their morals lie. I don't like that guy. Lie. 
and it's not with the consumers anymore. So now do you see the decline of Blizzard? I do, but... But what, my son? What happens now? Will Blizzard ever redeem themselves? Will I ever be excited for another title? That is for them to decide. We can only wait. Not waiting. But, but if I were you, Act Man, I would let go of hope. Let go before it leads you astray. I can do to me. Ah. This is a goodbye video for all my people, all the people I knew and had the high workshop. Goodbye. All the people that I've had pleasure to play World of Warcraft with. Goodbye. All the people I had the pleasure to develop World of Warcraft with. Goodbye. Um, all the uh, new Ogremar. Thank God. Goodbye. Old Ogremar. You will always be in my heart. Uh, People that I've met through StarCraft modding um, and other modding related to Blizzard, now that everything Blizzard, I mean, everything you develop for Blizzard is basically copyright infringement and basically they will attack you for it. Goodbye. So I'm not working on that anymore. I'm not working on World of Warcraft anymore. Goodbye. 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 And fuck you, Blizzard. Chris Metzen, we all love you and we hope you're doing well. And God bless you, Actman, and thank you. And I will leave a link of your channel to your channel in the description and the yeah in the description below. Thank you for so much for like I've already said goodbye to Blizzard a long time ago, but thank you for reminding me of just how and for informing me of just how bad everything has become in, in the gaming industry. And I highly recommend your channel to anybody who's watched it, highly relatable. I don't politicize videos. I don't attack people, but I will point out of what's wrong from their country, just like as we pointed out what's wrong with, with China censoring everything and how it is affecting our society. Sometimes we need to speak up about it. And you've done a very good job at informing us what the fuck's going on. Thank you very much. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, Ackman, thank you very much. And that's all. That's all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching.